Hello, my name is Roisin and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another vlog. So in today's video, I'm going to be reading two books which are by some of my favourite podcasters um, and so I've been meaning to read them since they came out. Those two books are A Sentimental Education by Hannah McGregor who hosts the podcast Witch Please and A Feminist Killjoy and What We Don't Talk About When We Talk About Fat by Aubrey Gordon who co-hosts the podcast Maintenance Phase and both of those are podcasts that I love. Um, which please is a Harry Potter podcast and I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan but it is a podcast that focuses on looking at Harry Potter from various different like academic lenses um, and the ways that you can look at texts in that way and it's introduced me to things like trauma theory um, and uh, adaptation theory which I used when I made my video about persuasion which I'll leave linked in the cards above um, so it's more the theory side of things that I'm more interested in like I am familiar with Harry Potter but I'm not a super huge fan but maintenance and then maintenance phase um, is a podcast where Aubrey and her co-host they look at various different wellness trends and debunk them basically um, and they are like looked at Dr Oz they look at like quite like harmful things that are full of false information like snake oil um, rather than I mean they did one about keto I think I think it was keto they did one about so they, they they do look at specific diets but most of the time they're not really focused on specific diets but it is about they did one about BMI which is really interesting and one about calories as well which was really interesting and I will leave all of this information linked in the description if you aren't familiar with them they are quite well-known podcasts but if you aren't familiar with them you can go and check them out so I'm going to be reading those two books in this vlog so it's going to be quite a short vlog I think I was looking around for another book by a podcast host um, but I decided why don't I just read the books that I own and like have wanted to read um so that's what we're going to be doing and I am halfway through A Sentimental Education by Hannah McGregor um so far I am enjoying it I'm listening to the audiobook which I am for both of these because they are both podcast hosts that I like, so I'm used to them in that format. Um, and so I thought it would be a good way to do it for me is to um, continue in the format with which I am familiar with them. So it's a very short book um, and it's about sentimental literature, but also about Hannah's, it's kind of a memoir. Um, what did she say? It's auto theory, auto theory. It's in the, in the genre of auto theory. So she's looking at literary theory, but also including her own um, personal like autobiography and her own experience with literature and sentimental literature is literature I think mostly from like the 19th century um, that was um, supposed to make you feel things basically and it's so she includes Uncle Tom's Cabin which was related to abolition and Little Women and its relation to gender politics um, but also sort of the, the limits of a sentimental um, novel and um, ideas of empathy and reading making you a more empathetic reader um, and empathy uh, reading and political change and I'm really enjoying it I like the way Hannah writes anyway or the way she speaks um, which is what I'm more used to but this is obviously what she's written um, but I, I enjoy it and I enjoy the way that she puts herself into it as well it's not something I'm super familiar with I don't think I've read a huge amount of auto theory um, but I am enjoying reading hers so far. The thing is it's a very short book but I'm taking ages to read it because currently I, I'm taking notes whilst I read it um, because I am hoping to do a video, another video essay at some point um, for which part, some of the information for this will be uh, the backbone of that video or part of that video things I'm thinking about. Um, so I'm taking notes. So it's taking me a lot longer to read than it would otherwise. Like the audiobook is four and a half hours long and I mean I listen to my podcasts on 2.5 speed so I can listen to books by the same people that fast as well because I'm very used to their voices. Um, but obviously I can't do that and take notes at the same time. I have a cold right now so I'm not feeling great. <laughs> um, but so I will uh, hopefully give you some more cognizant like joined up thoughts when I have finished the book um, and I'll get back to you later. I had no sense of the literary history I had just sketched, but it shouldn't be surprising that a child can edit equally and like Hello, so I finished A Sentimental Education by Hannah McGregor and I, I enjoyed it. Um, like I said, I was taking notes whilst I was reading it, so it was a very different reading experience to anything else I've read. And I always find it hard to review non-fiction anyway because it's so different um, to fiction. It's harder for me to talk about the writing or obviously there's no characters to discuss. Um, I enjoyed Hannah McGregor's talking about why can I never remember it? Auto theory. Um, I can always think auto fiction and then it's not auto fiction. Auto theory um, and the relationship of the self to theory and putting one's self into talking about academic subjects. And also her talk about parasocial relationships um, and 
being a presence online as she is being known and how that can be performative and the drive for authenticity um and the desire for that from an audience um i all thought i thought that was a really interesting discussion and i really enjoyed reading it um i don't know if it's a, a book that's really going to stick with me particularly long um i like I like McGregor's writing style and I like the way that she was able to combine theory so well. One of the things that I've always liked about her podcasts is the, the talk about theory and the, the, it being from an academic perspective. Um, and so I enjoyed that as well in this book. But I think the main thing is that it's a book that I picked up because I like the writer rather than a book that I picked up because I'm necessarily particularly interested in the subject matter. Whereas the other two books, and yes, I did say two, <laughs> the other two books are um, books that I am interested in the subject matter as well as enjoying uh, other works by the writer. Um, so I think that that's going to make a difference in terms of my enjoyment of the other books. So as I said, yes, I am now reading two more because Hannah McGregor mentioned in her book, the book Big Friendship by um, Anne Friedman and Amina Tussauds. And they had a podcast called Call Your Girlfriend, which finished two or three years ago now, um, which is why I forgot about it. But um, I really loved that podcast when it was on and I'd listened to it every week. Um, and it was one of my favourites. So it fits the bill of this video. And again, I've got the audio book because uh, that fits with liking the podcast hosts. So I am about 30% of the way through Big Friendship now. Big Friendship is what I'm in to you and Anne call their friendship because saying besties or BFFs or best friends feels a little childish. These are big friendships that have been for, in the long haul as well as big in terms of emotional impact and importance and they talk to academics and other people about friendships um, but the beginning is about their friendship and it starts with them like their friendship kind of on the rocks and being about to fall apart and then we go back to see how they got to know one another and it's written in a really interesting we style so they've written it completely together um, and the narration is done between Aminatu and Anne they kind of go back and forth between one another um, which is also interesting they stated in the introduction that it's going to be more like a podcast the way that they've done the production of it um, than just a straight audiobook um, and they also have the voices of the people they interviewed or another person interpolating for the voices of the people they've interviewed I think I've already heard Gina Delvac who was their producer who was on a number of their episodes I think I've already heard her voice um, or at least I, I assumed it sounded like her so yeah I'm gonna read that and I'm gonna read Things we don't talk about when we talk about fat, and I'll come back to you later. You fixed? You alright? Can you show me? Good. Can we bother to fix you properly? No. We're gonna attempt this. Can you see me? Can you see me? Right. Hello. So today we are going to London again. We're gonna be in the East End this time. We are going to Shoreditch and Brick Lane. Take you round, get a bagel, um, go to some bookshops, find somewhere to read, and um, yeah, I'll take you with me. So I have now finished Big Friendship by Anne Friedman and Amina So <clears throat> I thought it was just okay. I It didn't really grab me in the way that I was hoping it would. I really liked Call Your Girlfriend uh, when it was around as a podcast, but I think that it was, what I liked about it was them discussing like current events and very much talking about politics and what was going on in their lives and interviewing people as well. They would interview people whose books they'd read or whose were involved some way in a movement that they were interested in. Um, they would donate blood regularly every year, for example. And they would always link those things with their personal lives and talk about how they felt about things as well as what was going on. Um, but that was what really interested me in Call Your Girlfriend. And I've talked before on this channel about how I'm not a huge memoir person. Memoir doesn't necessarily work for me that well. And I think that Big Friendship was one of those cases. It was a mix between memoir about their life, Anne Friedman and Amina Tussauds friendship. Um, in particular, their time when they struggled. So it talks about their friendship and how they were really good, close friends, they were besties, but they had a kind of issue in, at one point in their life. It wasn't like there was a big falling out and it wasn't like they drifted apart either. It was kind of in between those two things. And they 
and so they were struggling with their friendship and they were struggling to express their feelings and the book centers around that and they talk to different experts about different uh, parts of this people who are for example couples therapists talking about relationships that are platonic in that way um, and also to people who've studied friendship and then also to writers who write about friendship or people who talk about their own friendships. I found it interesting in several places but I did find that it was neither one or the other enough. Um, I felt like it didn't really get deep into the emotional feelings part of how it felt to lose their friends it was very much like a retrospective thinking back and it felt kind of sanitized and taken away from the deep feelings it was like there was it was not quite vulnerable it didn't quite go there enough for me in terms of their feelings about how this happened um, but it also wasn't quite a, a book about friendship and about like the science and everything um, I don't know if I would enjoy that anyway because it just felt a little light and a little pop in that sense and that's not my preference I prefer like very niche but very deep um, rather than kind of broad and so it just it just I just found it missed the mark in that sense um, it talks about difficulties of interracial relationships and it talks about being a friends online and um, how online spaces can affect friendship um, and I found that it was like very much it's strange because they're millennials I'm millennials I looked it up and Anne Friedman's like 12 years older than me and Aminatu is only like eight years older than me seven or eight years older than me so they're not like super a different generation from me but it felt very different and I think that that uh, eight to twelve years maybe does make a big difference because um, of the like time in my life but also like I'm not like a high-flying career person as much as I believed I would have been <laughs> when I was younger that's what I believed about myself but it's not who I am now it's not the place in my life that I'm at and I felt like there was a lot of like wealth on display in this book and I also felt like it was very American centric and very from an American perspective which is fine because it, they are Americans writing about their own personal experience and interviewing Americans and things um, but yeah it did it did feel very of its place um, and of their age group and neither as universal nor as specific as I wanted it to be it felt like it was straddling a fence and it didn't work for me for that reason it was fine it was fine it was nothing wrong with it it's not like I'm gonna give it to uh, a zero or anything um, but I would say it's a six out of ten for me like it's just okay and it didn't really bring me anything that's gonna stick with me I am also halfway through uh, what we don't talk about when we talk about fat by Aubrey Gordon and I kind of wish she narrated it herself and um, there is an actress doing it and I feel like the inflection of the actress doing the audiobook is not quite how I feel like it would be because I've heard Aubrey's voice so many times when listening to her podcast maintenance phase um, I feel like there would be a different inflection a kind of slight more wryness and humor that I feel like the audiobook narrator is not quite where I would think it should be but um, that's just being persnickety so this is similarly to Big Friendship and A Sentimental Education actually it is auto theory almost um, about like fat studies um, and it is about Aubrey's experience being a fat woman she does mention weights but I, I at some points but she um I'm not going to but she is a very fat woman as she describes herself um and so she talks about her own experience in things like planes and shopping and with friends and the way that the body positive movement has turned thin people into thinking they she is a place to deposit their own insecurities about their body which that section made me feel incredibly uncomfortable um but in a good way um and then also she is talking about the statistics about like medical fat phobia and uh, the airline industry and how fat phobia affects people's lives and also she talks about her own experience going to a fat camp as a child and the research that suggests that dieting the only thing it really can do for you is make you fatter uh, it is interesting it's not anything I haven't heard before I feel like because I'm a person who has been reading about fat activism and listening to podcasts and things about diet culture and not in terms of the people I'm listening to in a more activist sense in a more like theory focus this is not baby's first fat theory book like I have read a fair amount about this and I feel like this book is more of an introduction so whilst I think it's well written and well researched um, and like I said some parts of it have made me uncomfortable particularly when Aubrey is writing about her own experience I do feel like this is more of an like entry level book and it's not quite going as deep and systemic as I would like it to um, I feel like it could be confronting for people who are, have not read in the way that I have like aren't used to aren't aware of 
uh, stories and instances haven't grappled with their own fat phobia like I'm not saying I'm cured or anything but like I have been thinking about things like this for several years as a small fat person myself uh, I have been thinking about this for a long time and so it is something that I am in some ways aware of um, and so it is not new and I think when I read non-fiction I always want to be going to the new and be finding things that I don't know and to be like pushing myself further. All of the non-fiction that I've read so far in this book, in this vlog, have been not what I want but it doesn't make them bad books. They are not like I'm so, first of all, not a memoir reader, second of all, so specific about what I want. I want, I want to be challenged and I want to find things that are difficult for me to read, or not difficult, but I want to be things that like expand my brain, um, like Heavy by Casey Lehman did that for me, or um, This Changes Everything by Naomi Klein, those sorts of books, given me new avenues to think about and made me want to take notes and to look into things further, and none of these books are doing that for me at the moment and I think possibly also it's because I have listened to the podcasts of all of these people and like they're only can only think about talk about write about so much like they don't have infinite things to talk about and think about so the ideas they are discussing are ideas that I have heard them discuss before um so perhaps for someone who is less familiar with them again they would be an interesting jumping off point what we don't talk about when we talk about fat I'm gonna finish that and I'll come back to you I am feeling incredibly uncomfortable today I'm like in my digestive system. I am so bloated, I am so uncomfortable. So um, I will come back to you later, um, but I was meant to keep this short and I seem to be incapable of doing that. So I'll come back later with when I finish the books and we will wrap this all up. finish what we don't talk about when we talk about fat now by Audrey Gordon uh Aubrey Aubrey Gordon sorry I, that name is not a name that we use in the UK so I get confused um I look like death I did not realize that before coming on here anyway um so yes I finished it I would say out of the three books it's the one that I enjoyed the most I, I find it's not really enjoyable no, none of these three types or these three books are particularly enjoyable non-fiction that's not really what they're for. So a sentimental education was definitely the most academic and talked about theory and things which is something that I do enjoy in non-fiction but it was just a subject area that I was only sort of tangentially interested in and that's why I didn't enjoy it as much whereas what we don't talk about when we talk about fat is an area that I am interested in but that means that I have read a lot about it, listened to a lot of podcasts about it, done a fair amount of research and so whereas a sentimental education had more that was new for me what we don't talk about when we talk about fat had less of that all three of these as i said before are kind of um auto theory well yeah i guess even the friendship big friendship book is talking about friendship um studies and the research into friendship and things and the importance of friendships so i guess all of them are auto theory um and i would say that the auto part the personal memoir part of it of aubrey gordon's work i found the most interesting so she does different sections about different types of things that affect fat people fat discrimination um so there was an uh, a section on airplanes there was a section on um desirability and um like these type of sexual harassment or the violent like rape threats that people in fat bodies experience because of the lack of people believe in people like um particularly people in fat bodies a lot of the time are less likely to be believed when they come forward with uh sexual assault claims so um she talks about a lot of the statistics and then also her own she sort of sets up the, the topic with her own personal experience of the situation um and then moves on to talk about um the, the statistics more broadly and other people's experiences and i thought it was a very well laid out book very accomplished book the writing was yeah which is fine nothing special but not but it did it did exactly what it needed to do it wasn't my style of writing necessarily um in terms of non-fiction i don't know what it is i think i read all three of these books because they are people with whom i have a parasocial relationship which was interesting particularly with the sentimental education because parasocial relationships was part of the topic 
um, there. So that part I did find particularly interesting. But overall, I don't think any of these books have really grabbed me. I really want to read Aubrey Gordon's next book, the one that's come out most recently. Um, I think it came out in January, so it's a very new release. You Just Need to Lose Weight and 19 Other Myths About Fat People, um, because I think that that will go more into the anyway, that will go more into the kind of statistics and the kind of I like to read I like to read non-fiction books that completely introduced me to something new that I didn't know anything about like Other Lambs by Thomas Halliday which I am <laughs> I'm not a science person so that I found really interesting or I like to read ones that I feel like are in a direction of something that I'm interested in and know something about but go further than my own knowledge and like introduce me to new ideas and things which is like uh, this Changes Everything by Naomi Klein, books that like expand my mind in some way. So I want it either to be expanded in a direction of something I'd never heard of or in a direction of taking me further than what I already knew. And I feel like these three books didn't do either of those things. Um, either they were, Big Friendship was just very like centre of uh, ground. I didn't feel like it really went in any direction far enough for it to be really truly engaging. It didn't like challenge me in any way. Um, I don't know, it was published in 2020 so it's only three years old. I thought it was older than that. It felt older than that. Obviously it was written before then but yeah it felt like it <coughs> the discussions in it weren't quite cu current. It is the issue with reading books about pop culture or that involve pop culture or a certain type of a moment in culture is that move, you move on from them much more quickly. Um, so yeah I have enjoyed all of the books in this vlog for different reasons but I don't think any of them will truly stick with me that long. Aubrey Gordon's book made me want to read her next book, uh, Hannah McGregor's book made me realise that I don't need to read books just because I like the way someone thinks because I've enjoyed her talking about theory in terms of literary theory in her podcasts but I'm not so interested in it when it's not a topic that I'm particularly interested in so um, I should probably stick more to the topic than the author and um, Big Friendship similarly um, it just felt a bit too poppy for me and it's not what I'm personally looking for in non-fiction but that doesn't make it a bad non-fiction book it, it still works so I hope you have enjoyed this vlog um, it was again a little more chaotic I've been trying to do my vlog slightly differently this year so um, you'll have to let me know in the comments how it panned out for you and I will see you again very soon thank you for watching please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe. I put out new videos twice a week so I will see you again very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye!